I'm Colin Stagnito with AOPA. We're at, here at New Century Air Center in Olathe, Kansas. And I'm Jessica Koss, and I'm a pilot at Garmin. And what are we gonna be doing today, Jessica? Today we're gonna to take Garmin's King Air 200 flying, which is equipped with auto throttle and auto land. All right, and this is a retrofit application. It is the first retrofit installation of auto land. Fantastic, so we're gonna take off and you're gonna show me what auto throttle can do. And then as we come back to the airport, what's gonna happen? We're going to automatically land. Fantastic. All right, well, come along with us. And let's see how this works. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. New Century Ground, Garmin Test 17 is a King Air 200. We're at Garmin North, we'll be VFR to the west, and we got the weather. So what is this new taxi depiction called? Yes, 3D exocentric safe taxi. So it overlays a 3D depiction of the airport environment, including hangars, uh, buildings at the airport. Also, as you can see, uh, hold short lines. Yeah, I saw the, yeah, the movement. All right, so I'm gonna arm auto throttle here. And we see that enunciation here at the top of our EIS. And we see that it's in white. And when auto throttle uh, activates, it, at, again, about a thousand foot pounds, it will turn green. It'll go into that active mode. So we'll see that on takeoff roll there. Number five, Papa Delta, frequency change. Here's where we'll start to yep. see that PFD. Two, go back into normal. Four departure now also. Nice little pretty animation there. Yeah, nice. All right, you guys ready? Ready. All right. All right, the other auto throttles. No, no active. Bravo, are you heading directly west? Two seven zero. Yes, yes, we are. One no Bravo. All right, I'm going to engage the autopilot. So you can see in terms of pilot workload, this takes a ton off. Absolutely. Air pilots. So the throttles don't move on their own. They are moving. Oh, they are. They're moving just imperceptibly, yeah. I'm going to let it speed up, and once we get straight and level, I'll uh, flip it to manual mode. I'll kind of sh demonstrate Okay. pretty large power reduction. And again, I just want you to see how smooth, nice, and easy it is. See, I can control the speed selection. I'm going to take it back to about 180. I just want you to watch. Okay, yeah, really now it's more back. obvious, right? Yeah. Now uh, it is super smooth. New Century Tower, Garmin Test 1-7. Carbon test 17, Tower. Carbon test 17, we're about 19 miles to the west northwest. We'd like to come in and do an auto land demonstration, preferably on 1 8 if possible. Carbon test 17, Tower, Roger, report a 10 mile final runway 1 8. Report a 10 mile final runway 1 8, Carbon test 17. Let's do it! So a good, good, firm push. There you go. Emergency Auto Land activated. The Emergency Auto Land system is controlling the aircraft and will land at the safest nearby airport. Please remain calm. Avoid touching the flight controls which may interfere with Auto Land. Your destination is shown on the bottom of the left and right displays. Your estimated time to landing is shown on the top of all three displays. Fuel remaining, that's interesting. Yeah, so you'll get that fuel populated if uh, the pilot put in the fuel load of prior to takeoff. Well, there you can see, it's selected New Century, runway 1A. Really just talking the passengers through what's happening as we go along. How long have you found on average it takes for it to select an airport to land at? Yeah, that's a good question. It really depends on the scenario, uh, where you are over uh, you know, wh where you are in the country or where you are in the world, uh, the number of airports it has to select. It goes through an optimization algorithm. Uh, it takes things like wind into account, crosswind, headwind, uh, runway slope and gradient, uh, runway width, length, uh, along with weather and terrain. So as it runs through that, uh, it's typically taking about less than 30 seconds uh, to, to pick an airport. Impressive. So it will fly this hold? Yeah, the hold is there, much like you'd see it on a typical approach. 
it doesn't necessarily mean it will fly it. Okay. It means if it did fly it, that's what it would look like. So okay. if it can't achieve a, a vertical navigation profile to get to the right altitude and airspeed, it'll enter that hole to lose altitude and to slow down before it goes to a final approach. Tower Grammar test 170, 10 miles. Tower test 170, fish tower roger, port of 5 mile, final runway 18. 45 mile, final 18, Grammar test 170. One of the things that uh, we didn't point out when you push the button is it deployed the engine anti ice vanes. You can see the lights yep. on the CAS are active, and we've been running the boots on a three minute timer. And that three minute timer will also obey the negative 40 degree temperature limitation. So if it's colder than negative 40 degrees, it won't cycle the boots. So as we turn about a five mile final, you can see the airport off to our right. The gear will lower, and then we'll go full flaps. Tower Garment Test 17, 5 mile final 18. Garment Test 17, runway 18, you are cleared to land and uh, traffic uh, runway 22 will be past the intersection. Clear to land 18, any chance we could get a momentary pause on the runway for Garment Test 17? Garment Test 17, you can expect it. Sure thing, Garment Test 17. Alright, here comes the landing gear. There's our three green enunciation. I'm going to go ahead and match that with the handle. So we're still on approach flaps. Yep, and there are speed, distance, and altitude thresholds for all the configuration changes that it looks for before it's okay. ready to make those changes. Alright, we're going to go ahead and match that with a handle, so we're full flaps, three green, we're cleared to land. Okay. So now it's just auto throttle and attitude just to stay on glide slope? That's correct. It's the autopilot and the auto throttle working to keep us on the glide path as we approach from my 1.8. It targets the most conservative V-Ref speed of 103 knots. So how does it calculate, um, if it's gusty, it's going to add a gust factor? That's correct. Is there a limitation for crosswind? There's no crosswind Did limitation, nine, per se, right uh, but it will favor runways with less of a crosswind. But if the best available runway, or the only available runway, has a crosswind, it'll take it. And now, what would tower be hearing? from the aircraft at this point in time. It's a periodic message that uh, you know, says who you are, uh, in this case, November 288 Kilo Mike, King Air, uh, inbound, emergency auto land activated, pilot incapacitated, you know, inbound for landing. And it would uh, transmit that both on tower frequency and on 121.5. So here comes 45 feet. You'll see the throttles are gonna start to roll back. Yeah. back to the center line. Yep, and it'll apply moderate braking to slow the airplane down. Yeah, that was very impressive. Great flare. You know, firm touchdown, which you want, but not bouncy. All right. I think passengers would love being on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an impressive demonstration. Hopefully it never has to be used in anger, but if it is, it's going to be an amazing save.